Hello, everybody. Welcome to Quasar Quinology, the podcast that reviews the adventures of your favorite cosmic-powered Avenger, Quasar, everyone's favorite superhero. Uh, I'm your right. host, Michael, as always, I'm joined by <laughs> Joshua Mervell. And today we're going to be taking a look at issues 26, 27, and 28 of the Cosmic Avenger Quasar. That's right. And these are all written by Mark Grenwald. And two of them are drawn by, by Greg Capullo, who most people know from Spawn and from Batman. But the first one we're going to talk about is drawn by Dave Hoover, who I know from drawing um, Starman in the late 80s. The, um, you know, the, the Starman with the purple and yellow costume? We covered him before. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah, but yeah. D- Dave Hoover drew that. Um, not a huge fan of Dave Hoover, to be honest, but we'll talk about the art more later. But uh, yeah, Josh, you can tell us about this issue. Right. So this is the um, first issue after the huge kind of like ending to Quasar's whole story arc. Uh, <laughs> yes. Like they it's... kept it going another, you know, 50 issues. Yeah. Right, right, right. So I mean, yeah, just yeah. like the, the thing that they've been setting up with this yeah. uh, character and this book kind mm-hmm. of came to a bit of a conclusion. So now we're like picking up the pieces and we're kind mm. of um, setting up a new era for the character. Right. And sorry, my dog is being really uh, neat. Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're kind of setting up a new era of, era right now for Quasar. And um, we have this really, I actually really love this cover a lot. Uh, we have Thanos in the background, and he's got his hand, like the gauntlet hand, in the foreground, and in his hands uh, are Quasar and Moon Dragon as they're kind of like floating in this like mist that's coming out sure. of his hand. It's pretty fun. I I kind of like this. And this it's is not... sorry. Oh, I was gonna say you're I'm not a huge Hoover fan, but this cover's pretty good. Yeah, I'll admit. Yeah, and um, this is uh happening simultaneously with the infinity gauntlet storyline in the MC or in the MCU in which Marvel should, comics at the time. Yeah. Which we should remind everybody is the infinity war story in the Marvel movies. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we catch up with Quasar as he's, uh, flying Makari and moon dragon back to, uh, earth. From I think he, they were in the Eon verse, or some I can't yeah. remember quite exactly where they were, but they were off right. uh, fighting uh, uh, this like huge threat against Eon, and Eon right. sacrificed himself, and there's this huge kind of like battle between these Celestials happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're flying back to the Four Freedoms Plaza, and um, they're catching up with uh, their friends from work. Uh, and we kind of have this weird moment where, um, Wendell Vaughn and, uh, Kayla are kind of having like this intimate moment where you're, we're kind of feeling some, some chemistry between them. And then mood dragon just comes up and like shoves Kayla out of the way. And she's like, listen, I want to be with Wendell Vaughn. You get out of here. Like she's worthless. And she mm-hmm. makes her kiss Makari through her mind control. And we find out that mm-hmm. before when she went over to Makari's house, it was because they, they were both mind controlled to be with each other. And they don't even really remember it. It was just right. her kind of trying to drive a wedge in between them. And which explains, like, that scene in the previous issue, which I'm glad was explained by this, right? Right, yeah. There's a couple yeah. of things, too, that I, I'm glad we got a little bit of, like, closure with that have been mm-hmm. set up before. And I think that they were some of my biggest problems with those okay. comics. Like, even, um, like, we're going to find out here that uh, Wendell Vaughn, after this kind of, like, confrontation, he tells... Moon Dragon to get lost. He doesn't like somebody just because they're, you know, physically their match. Like he has feelings and, and he goes off of emotion. Uh, he opens up the portal behind the bookshelf in the office back into the uh, the other dimension where Eon's body was. And he sees that there's this weird ship 
here and uh these beings come out and they're they they present themselves as the mourners and they mm-hmm. are kind of here to create a funeral like a send-off for eon and mm-hmm. again before i was i think i think it was the last issue i was kind of upset with the abrupt ending and we didn't really get much closure between right him and eon and i feel like this is almost an answer to that where sure. we're kind of seeing the funeral of eon mm-hmm. uh so there's kind of like some funny bits back and forth about like did he have any necks of kin or did he you know have a will and whatnot so then these uh these group of aliens are kind of like don't worry we'll take care of all of this then uh, we cut over to Thanos and Mephisto. They're kind of chatting, and it's just setting up that uh, Eon was one of the entities that kind of was able to go up against Thanos and and mm-hmm. kind of push back against him. But now that he's gone, Thanos is kind of happy that he doesn't have to deal with that anymore. Uh, we cut over to Moon Dragon, and we have this really strange scene where she's kind of like having this inner dialogue about her her like match and she's like it almost looks like they're setting it up where she's going to jump off a building and mm-hmm. yeah commit suicide and when she she puts one foot out and she says if I can't have if I don't have anybody then and she steps onto a platform as a ship kind mm-hmm. of flies up she's like I'll uh, um I'm not ready to accept defeat just yet. And she like mm-hmm. walks into her ship. And she flies off. And um, as this happens, we see this woman who's kind of got gold skin and blonde hair. Uh, she watches the ship fly away. Kind of a hint to what's going on later. Uh, he reconnects with his mom. Nothing important or exciting happens there. Uh, he shows back up to uh, the funeral three days later. And all of these crazy beings are here. The funeral starts. They start talking. Uh, uh, and they kind of have some actually like wise words. And Wendell is kind of thinking to himself, like accepting Eon's death now. And that's when Thanos shows up and kind of busts the statue of Eon. And uh, he threatens Quasar and kind of like mocks him that his master his his the person that he was supposed to be protecting is now dead so the two of them kind of have a little fight uh thanos uh, a couple of times feels like he might be defeated but thanos kind of is easily um able to deflect a lot of the attacks from quasar uh we cut over to this woman and we find out that her name is her and she's looking for her mate so she's kind of finding uh these beings with lots of uh power and she finds silver surfer and he's kind of like a shoe i don't have time for you we cut back over to thanos and quasar once again they're fighting each other and thanos kind of laughs him off and is like listen i don't have time to like play with you right now so Mm -hmm. he recreates these four beings out of eon's body and they are former uh protectors of eons former um owners of the quantum bands we have um re this like bird creature we have mm-hmm. marvel boy the last one before quasar to be to, to have the inf- uh quantum bands we have tantra the first non-humanoid and then we have um Stygian Starbender or Stygian yeah, Starbender everyone knows him yeah. right <laughs> uh, <laughs> the first ever owner of the quantum bands right. and um, they're going to uh, attack him and Thanos has promised them all that the person who kills Quasar will become the permanent protector of the universe and take mm. Quasar's job um, and as this is happening, we see Eon's kind of body and form spill out of the Four Freedoms Plaza and start spreading throughout New York as we leave off to kind of, you know, have a bit of a cliffhanger here. And I feel like this is a really good cliffhanger. I I like the way that they ended this story. I feel like 
bringing these characters back and then like bringing back some danger on earth Mm. kind of feels like a nice balance um as a story itself it's not super strong it definitely feels like an epilogue to Mm -hmm. uh the previous story and almost like a prologue to the next story so it's it's a bit of a strange issue but i didn't mind it being somebody who's following along if that makes sense um, I well, think if some sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I think maybe if somebody was picking this issue up for the first time, it would be a little bit strange and off putting because it's sure. Uh, it doesn't really stand by itself as a story or, or a book, but it was fun. Right. I, I, I did enjoy it. OK, so I just want to make a, a little note here about these characters at the end. Sure. Yeah. Uh, MarvelFandom.com says this is the first appearance of Marvel Boy, which of course is not true because he, he first appeared in the 50s. So either this website's crap <laughs> or this is like a different Marvel Boy, the blue Marvel. No, it, this is just wrong. Let's just ignore this website for a minute. Interesting. Um, I do like, okay, here's the problem I have with the structure of the story. <sighs> mm. This is the cliffhanger. We don't need like that extra page of the Eon's body. It's a very cool idea. But it should not have been the ending. It should have been the second last scene because this revelation of the four champions that are going to mm. fight Razor, I think it's much more tantalizing. That should have been the ending. The other thing, too, I didn't like about the ending is how the omniscient narrator says, in three hours, Eon's body will engulf the island of Manhattan. I don't like that kind of information just being spoon-fed to me. I'd rather – like Reed Richards or someone mm-hmm. is like calculating and like, Oh no, because then it becomes like a real threat. Right. Or we see like Ken and Kayla in the office as this thing starts spilling out. There you go. Because then right. like, it, it adds danger. on. Yeah. It adds on to the danger of these past four members coming back. It's like Quasar can't go and save them right now. Yeah. So it, here's the other thing too, you know, mm-hmm. well, the other thing is this building with the, these tentacles sticking out, Again, I'm sorry, Dave Hoover. He's just not a great artist. There's no sense of scale. I want to see sure, like maybe yeah. at the beginning, maybe ha- maybe throughout the book, that's like this is the first thing we see. Then halfway through the book, we see more, and then in the last page, it's all of Manhattan. Right. Like there, then you go, oh, oh, this is now a danger. But instead, we're just told that it's a danger, and that's why I don't think it's great. You know? Yeah. Um, but uh, but like you said, yeah, this issue is pretty good. It's like an epilogue. It, it doesn't really stand on its own. I'm not a huge fan of the Moon Dragon character, but she is creating some good conflict, so that's good. That is, I think, my biggest problem with all three of these stories. Mm-hmm. I really feel uncomfortable with the Moon Dragon and the her storyline. Sure. They yeah. feel very like fan servicey, I guess. Like the the two main women characters in these three issues both of their goals is to find a man to mate with and yeah. it's it just feels off and weird uh-huh. like i just don't i don't i don't like it at, at all um it's kind of uncomfortable sure uh, i don't know i mean i just think that I never liked Moon Dragon as a character, and I'm not a huge fan of her. We should also point out her is the female counterpart to him, which is Warlock, right, Adam Warlock. So, yeah, uh, I guess Mark Grenwell is just digging back into the, you know, Marvel Universe handbook and just pulling out some more obscure characters. But the problem I have is that it's happening at the same time as Infinity Gauntlet. It doesn't really mix well because – I mean, the Infinity Gauntlet, when it came out, it blew my mind. But the problem I have, and I've always had, is that Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet itself are so powerful that you have to really kind of write some loopholes into the story to make anything interesting, right? Right. Because like, he can do anything. I'm I'm confused, too, like where this takes place because I'm pretty sure Mephisto and him are talking about how He's already snapped and 50% of the population has disappeared. Yeah. So Thanos is just kind of like chilling now with Mephisto. Well, yeah, because that's you've read the original comic, right? It's been a long time, but I I remember there being more of a conflict. Well, he snaps his finger in the first issue. 
I think, kills half the universe, and then order is not restored until number six. So there's like six issues or six months worth of stories where everyone's gone. Not like the Marvel movies where there's five years. (laughs) Right, yeah. But anyway. um, Yeah, so the other thing is... Okay, no, I have another comment, but I'll save it for the next one. Okay, yeah. Um, So let's just talk about the art. What do you think of Dave Hoover's art? You know, I... I actually kind of like it in this issue. Um, really? Yeah. I I don't know why. I uh uh I, I'm not like super 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 familiar with him, but mm. um I thought that it was way more clear than okay. the next two issues. Art. Really? What in Sam Hill? I don't, really? Yeah. I don't know. I I thought it like. There's a lot of messiness. I feel like maybe it's the inking in the next two issues that, that is really true, yeah. make it like muddied. But yep. this this issue, I could tell on every panel what was happening, what was going on, and in the next two, I feel like it gets easily lost. Now, is it okay. is it perfect issue like art wise? No, it's fine. But I could at least clearly tell the story. Sure. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, on that note, we're going to jump to the next issue, sure, which yeah. is number tw- Quasar number 27. Um, hold on a sec here. Uh, which is Attack of the Quantum Banders. And unfortunately, <laughs> we have a Dave Hoover cover, but thankfully, we have Greg Capullo interiors. But this cover is just like... T- it's not look great. At Marvel, look at Marvel Boy's face. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just don't love it. It's a good idea for a cover, but <clears throat> not well executed. Like... I think a big problem too is that um, Marvel Boy and Quasar, and that's not just uh, uh, this issue. It's I think all of the issues. They look identical. Like even their faces. Uh-huh. There's Good nothing point. to distinguish them um, from each other. And even uh, maybe in the third issue uh, that we're going to be talking about. Like mm-hmm. <clears throat> even Makari in Quasar at times look extremely close to each other. Yep. But well, okay. So that being said, we yeah. jump into this issue now. Again, I'm a huge Greg Capullo fan, and I've been a fan since Quasar. So look at that. Four That's Freedoms Plaza. Much better. Like, like the compare it to the ending of the last issue where mm. it looks like a model toy. Like this yeah, is it's very how you flat. draw a skyscraper. Yeah. Like this is you're from the ground perspective looking up it looks like an actual skyscraper you're seeing all the tentacles like it's great and the so these tentacles see- have like shape and form like the other ones yes. didn't like yep. the this feels very organic and dangerous where mm-hmm. the other one just kind of felt like like slime or like goo like yep. it didn't have anything unique or special about it um this really does give you like a sense of danger yep and so we see the tentacles kind of like wreaking havoc and growing throughout New York City, which I love. Um, and then we cut back to inside. And again, this I think I mean, we can talk about the inking later, but this art, I think, is great. Like Quasar standing there confronting um, the four quantum banners. I think this is a great shot. Like even the way that the big like the one guy with all the stars in his body. What's mm-hmm. his name again? Whatever it is. Starbender. Come on. Yeah, Starbender. Everybody's yeah. favorite. Yeah, everybody's favorite. The way that he is framing Marvel uh, Boy, with it, it, like in between his legs, that's great. I think that's great composition. I love that. You know, I and I was, think I think that the base really does work, but like I feel like I can barely see Starbender in the foreground. Well, with this yeah, inking that, and there's like a weird coloring. right, and I. We got to talk with inking because again, and I saw this coming even before we got to these issues. I kept saying the inking is going to change, but it's still Keith Williams. So clearly, he was either told by editorial or he just decided to completely change his style. Maybe he's competing with Image and Todd McFarlane and that, you know, like over rendering yeah. everything. Or could there possibly be around this time a change in the printing or something that is like I don't that is like making no. it blurry or like okay. No, the no, the only difference that I can think of as far as that, if we were to jump back, it's possible that this is a scan of the original comic, and maybe, 
like if we were to jump back like a few issues, maybe they were scanned like digital. That maybe. you know what? Yes, I'm looking at issue 24, and it's a digital copy. You can, I mean, it still looks like a scan of a comic page, but it looks brighter and whiter. Mm-hmm. Okay. So maybe maybe they only reprinted up to 25. And now we're jumping into like someone's actual newsprint. Gotcha. Oh, so so it. maybe maybe it is just the version that muddied. we have that, that is being muddied. But I yeah. did find it a bit more tough to figure out what's going on. Yeah. Follow the story. Yeah. yeah. Agree. Uh, okay. So anyway, so um, so it's basically just Quasar fighting. But I do love this art. So mm-hmm. I'm enjoying what's happening here. Like it's almost manga influence. Like. Just I just love these compositions. Uh, like Quasar's – the page that you've got up, look at Quasar's face there, the quantum band, the panel designs, like rotating between small panels. The camera's up. The camera's down. The camera's here. I just love it. So it's it's pretty basic superhero stuff, but um, I do really enjoy this. Then we cut over to um, a spaceship out in space. That's where – what else would it be? <laughs> but that's um, Moon Dragon. Mm-hmm. And what is it she's doing here? She she's... grabs a bunch of like space dust, right, right, uh, and it turns out to be the ashes of uh, the Jack of Hearts, who we haven't seen since issue... the beginning of that story arc, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, like eighteen or nineteen yeah. or something. I think. Yeah. Then we cut back over to Quasar fighting all these uh, quantum banders. Quantum Banders? Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. And um, and eventually, I don't remember how he... Def- oh, he's also got this voice in his head, and he's trying to figure out, what is this voice I keep hearing? I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that kind of subplot goes on. Then we cut over to her. Who ser- so her is also searching for a mate, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then she runs across him, who we know is Adam Warlock, right? So they have a quick talk, and he's like, uh, I'm in the midst of something of universal rendering consequence. <laughs> I do not have time for riddles and distractions. State your business, doppelganger. And so she tells him what's going on, and he's like, yeah, I take a hike. So she's like, I'm so confused. What do I do now? So then she leaves. We cut back over to Quasar, and um, he uh, he's flying around trying to figure out how to defeat these villains, and he comes up with the idea – of flying into the quantum zone because it's kind of like outside of our universe and they're able, since they all have working with the same energy, they're not going to be able to sense him in the quantum zone, but then they follow him in any way and he manages to defeat them by what does he do? It's just basically gobbledygook. So like it doesn't matter, right? yeah. So what it is, is he is, um, he kind of does like an Uno reverse on them. I know they're all on guard against anyone trying to siphon energy through their bands, but maybe they won't be prepared for somebody doing the very opposite. So he essentially overcharges and he pushes energy into their quantum bands rather than trying to drain their quantum bands of their power, which causes them all to explode, which is kind of what happened to Marvel Boy. Yes, which is like something... Quasar figured out in like issue two or something, mm-hmm. I think, or one, right? Yeah. Right. So it's kind of cool to go back to that. Um, but anyway, so he blows them up. Then we cut over to the X Squadron Supreme who are helping um, like kind of rescue people from this, uh, you know, blob thing that's Eon, Eon's dead body. I also got to point out, I love the fact that Eon's body is so large that when he died, it took like several days for the rest of his body to get the information that the, that the brain wasn't right. there. Cause it's right. I love that idea. So anyway, we actually see a lot of Mer- other Marvel heroes here. Like we see Deathlock, Um, we see sleepwalker, Bob Budiansky sleepwalker. We see dark Hawk. Like this is a great little sampling of early nineties heroes. You know, mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. Um, and I'm uh, sure too. It's like a lot of characters that maybe weren't around a whole lot, but they've survived the snap. Sure. Right. Yeah, good so point. it's yeah, kind good, of like showcasing who's who's left. Yeah, that's true. And then we also see Moon Knight, mm-hmm. you know, the Jack of Hearts shows up. Then we cut back over to Quasar and Quasar is in the Eon verse. And he's like, what's going on? Uh, and then basically, of course, I can't remember what happens he, here. Oh, it's he like finds it's an egg. Oh, that's right. So this is where he finds the egg Mm -hmm. and finds out this is the source of the voice. But he gets attacked by Marvel Boy. But in the middle of all that, he 
is asked by the voice to hatch it out of the egg. And when he does, it ends up being a baby Eon who is the, I thought it was a girl at first, but it's, it's the son of Eon Mm -hmm. named Epic, right? Epoch. Yeah. Like, sorry, Epoch, Epoch, not Epic, like the Faith No More song, Epoch, Um, which looks exactly like Eon, except there's no superhero mask over her face. And so it's, and it's cool. like a baby face instead of it's a the, baby face. Yeah. You know, the Quasar yeah. kind of looking face or Marvel uh, more, more right. like maybe. But um, yeah, it's a little strange. I assume that they were trying to go with like a an androgynous like. A gendered th- thing for Eon, because even because they the keep baby him a mother. Yeah, even even the baby calls Eon the mother. Right. And then Eon calls later on, calls the baby uh, their daughter. But then in the next issue, Quasar's like, yeah, Eon's gone. He hasn't been around for a while. Like he's using right. different pro- like so it, I yeah. think I think it's kind of just whatever. I'm assuming uh, a, right. an abstract being. Right, right. No gender. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So then we cut back over to the X Squadron Supreme, and we see Doctor Spectrum using a Green Lantern esque trick to generate this. Uh, what is that called? Like a like a bulldozer yeah. to like push all this gunk out of the way. We see them all doing their thing. Then we see the materialization of like a like a, like kind of like a almost like an AI generated Eon, but it's it's biological, so it's not AI. But kind of giving like a wa- like a last will and testament or like a message from beyond the mm-hmm. grave, right? Quasar, if you're hearing this, I am dead, right? And basically now Epic is going to be Eon's new mentor kind of, right? But even though Epic or Epoch is a baby. But we get this nice little shot at the end. And we'll cu- like you said, some closure with Quasar mm-hmm. and Eon, right? And so Quasar is like, goodbye, Eon, and thank you for everything. And yeah, kind of like holding the baby there. So I think, I don't know, I I actually like the inking on this. Like if the way that uh, Keith Williams inks Ep- Epoch is really cool, I think, actually. I really love the design in these shots for Epoch. I, I love that it at times looks like a little midi eon, like here in the yes. corner. It yep. really, you can kind of see that it's related to uh that entity and then later on when he's kind of like talking to it it changes form a little bit and then as Mm -hmm. he's carrying it in this last shot it looks like a baby that's being swaddled like he's holding the baby in his arms i love that Mm -hmm. this shot is fantastic this panel here Mm -hmm. it's so good i I I love that i love it so much yeah Um, so overall i mean i think this issue was you know good it was solid um again it's partly because i love greg capullo's art so much but i just thought that i mean yeah you have the typical superhero fighting and unfortunately i don't think we see any of the supporting cast in this issue no no kayla no makari um and we do see a lot of like the her subplot i don't i'm not that interested in it's cool to see all the other heroes intervening and helping but it's kind of just one of those like obligatory like oh we have to show the scale of the uh the threat so we got to bring in all these other characters so it's kind of just an average issue but i enjoyed it though what do you think yeah it's it's an interesting direction that they're now going with this character um they have to set something up with him because his whole kind of purpose i think has been fulfilled um the whole kind of arc that they were playing off of so um now that they've officially closed that chapter in the previous one this one they are kind of like now making him the mentor to this being now that he kind of has all of this information and this power he he can kind of train up this new eon to be this like figure again which is really cool um Mm. so i like this concept uh this issue is fine Mm -hmm. uh but i'm really happy with kind of like the promise of where we're going sure uh which is a bit of a bummer when we get to the next issue (laughs) and it doesn't really kind of See, yeah, Do we'll that, see what but... happens. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let's. We might as well just jump yeah. right to it. Uh, you can start off, and then we'll. Right. 
flop. Yeah. So this one, we have a cover of like a bunch of uh, like really strong uh, Marvel characters standing in a huddle. And then in the foreground facing them is her. And we see who will be her mate. And again, the focus of this one is she is just trying to find somebody to mate with to create the perfect um, new race of beings. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little strange. I really love this, though. This is where Quasar, I think, is shining. Maybe the strongest yes. out of all three of these stories. I mm-hmm. love this scene. Um, I agree. But uh, Makari and Wendell are hanging out and they're putting together a new house for Wendell to live in. And the two of them are kind of just checking up. Makari is kind of like talking about how uh, now Wendell has to take care of this new baby. And it's really strange that he's got this alien as like a son almost. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then uh, Wendell gets a, a, a call from the Avengers that he needs to go help them out. So he puts on his costume or no, no, sorry, not yet. He, he gets like a, a ping on his quantum bands that something weird's happening. Mm-hmm. So he puts on his costume and we do also get like a, I'm assuming an explanation for why in the infinity gauntlet story, he was wearing the wrong costume. Cause it yes. was probably made before the quasar stuff but he's like yeah. oops i've got the wrong costume on and then he switches to the other one he's like you should have seen me the other day i had it on for a whole day it didn't even notice yeah so, it's a great explanation yeah yeah it's kind of fun uh so anyways he goes and he finds the uh jack of hearts and he's like whoa what are you doing i thought you were dead whatever they're chatting and he's like listen me and moon dragon are together now and i just want to make sure that you're not interested in her because she's mine now and he's like yeah i don't want anything to do with her it's like okay cool see ya and he leaves like that's the only kind of thing that happens in this scene uh yeah weird yeah. yeah as as the the jack of hearts is flying back up to the spaceship he runs into her and she's kind of like hmm uh no i don't you're not compatible with me and flies off mm. He's like, what the hell is that all about? So he tells Moon Dragon about what just happened, and she's just like, that that bitch better not be fucking around with Quasar. Quasar's mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quasar Wendell Vaughn gets back to his new house, and the whole thing has been put together already. Everything has been unpacked for his house from his house, and uh, we realize that it's only been half an hour and Makari was able to finish everything with his uh, super speed. Right. Which is kind of like a fun moment. And then again, immediately when he gets back, he gets a ping from the Avengers. So he's got to take off. Um, and then we get a little recap of what her and him were talking about, like an issue or two, or two ago. And then we see her fly to the X mansion and she's looking at the mutants and she's like, eh, your genetic material, your genetic, genetic material is too unstable. You guys won't do. Mm-hmm. So she flies off. Um, oh, and we should point out that this is a Jim Lee era X-Men shot. Uh, unfortunately, the inking by the guest thinker is a little bit sloppy, but otherwise it's a pretty cool shot. Yeah, it's a cool shot. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's and what I hear? Co- Moon- well, Sorry. Uh, yeah, I can jump in if you want. For yeah, me. yeah, sure. I, of course, I kind of forget what happens here, but now we cut over to moon dragon is um still trying to figure out like how to like further her plan and she's and she's like well uh she, talking about her she's like she may be my physical superior but if she dares to come in between me and my intended between my intended and me i'll make her pay so let me cut over to her flying down and meeting simon williams wonder man now the person simon is talking to i think that's supposed to be mark grenwald like a tribute like a a oh, little Mark okay. insert because he looks just like him. So that's but that's supposed to be like his agent or something because he's an actor in Hollywood, mm-hmm. right? So then, her, uh, kisses Simon and then puts something on her back, and then the camera reveals in the last panel that it's like this, um, like almost parasite. Like it looks like a big, I don't know what, like a big ball parasite thing that's like on his like yeah, uh, like a tick almost that's back. attached to yeah, his back. A giant tick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we get like a montage of other people that she's visiting, like Colossus, or, or is this 
Yeah, no, th- she's just going over people that she rejected, right? right? Yeah. And some of these people are on the cover, like Captain Britain, the thing, the Hulk, like all these other people. So she's flying along, and then we cut over to this scene, my favorite scene in the movie, or in the in the comic, and then we see um, <laughs> Avengers are waiting in line to go inside to talk to Captain America, and it's Hercules uh, waiting with Quasar, and then Thor comes out, and we should point out, I don't think this is the original Thor. I think it is, just a minute here, let me just oh. double check. Or maybe it is, but he, he has the different costume. So I thought maybe it was um, the second Thor, Thunderstrike. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm totally okay. wrong. Maybe it's the original Thor. But anyway, so Thor leaves, and then Hercules and Quasar walk in and sit down. And um, <laughs> and and Captain America's like, I hate having to play disciplinary, disciplinarian guys, but what's all this about you two getting into a brawl with Thor? Well, guess what? We're going to find out what happens because we'll be reviewing that in an upcoming episode of Quasar Chronology. So we should have checked that out. Yeah. But uh, they got into a fight, so they explained what happened. Then um, all of a sudden, there's another ping. There's an intruder in the he- Avengers headquarters. So they go to find out what's going on. And then uh, her explains <laughs> what's going on. And then her is like, uh, she looks at Hercules and she's like, her, uh, what I destroy, my cosmic power can easily recreate. Okay, the question remains, what brings you here? And then Hercules is like, obviously, she's here to see the Lion of Olympus. And she's like, Hercules is right. And he's like, Milady, you have the right attributes to become one of my mates. You say you wish to what? Mate with you. Thou hast talked me into it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And so basically, and then he's like, and then she's like, you, Captain, are the pinnacle of human perfection. But, you know, and then you, Quasar, yeah, you're okay. She's like, Thor, whom I met moments before you arrived, nah, he's, he's got an irksome enchantment about him, but that leaves only Hercules. And then she just walks away, and he's like, Milady? And she's like, I'll be in touch, Hercules. Uh, hey, wait, the son of Zeus stands already. I love that. <laughs> and then she leaves, like, oh, perhaps she wishes to contemplate the pleasures that await her rather than, hey, Herc, and this is what they notice. Now he has, like, a parasite on his back, Right. right? So he's the equation like, oh, I better go like talk to her about this, find out what's going on. So then as he's flying, he meets up with Hyperion, who is – what is he dealing with? I don't even remember. He also got a thing attached to oh, him. Right. So he's trying to chase down her as well and he, Hyperion's like, I'm going to come with you. But Quasar moves too quickly and like blasts past Hyperion. Right. Um, and – and now, so then she's going to confront him about these parasites. And right. basically saying, you can't just force someone to combine your ge- genetic material with yours. Like, there's a word for that. No one tells her what she can or cannot do. So they basically start to fight, right? And then she, oh, and then he, he entraps her in, like, quantum energy, right? Right. He starts, um, he starts, like, siphoning off her power into the quantum bands, and she realizes... Uh, or he realizes what she's doing now is to just not use her powers at all. So she, in order to not lose them. So she just right. starts falling and he's like, oh shit, I've never had this happen before where somebody realizes what's going on and then just stops using their powers altogether in order to save them. So right. it's kind of like a stalemate. So he has to like catch her and wrap her up, but she's still mm-hmm. like awake and kind of berating him. Uh, 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 mm-hmm. for for doing this yeah and so then um hold on a second, let me jump back here so then uh basically all of a sudden we get the materialization of uh what's his name hyperion uh, uh, uh hyperion and then um and then they're arguing back and forth but then who shows up but jack of hearts all right her <laughs> for what you've done to quasar my mistress says you must pay so there's the cliffhanger concluded next issue. So this cliffhanger is not as good as the last one or the one no. before it. No. It's just sort of like, okay, we're going to let this play out. They're going to fight. But I guess I think like you, I was never that interested in this plot to begin with. So I don't kind of really care that much how it's going to end, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't really get why this is happening. Like right. it doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't feel like I need to like know about the story. Like it just, <laughs> right. I don't know. I, I, it's just, I think just not my thing. 
Uh, I really am not enjoying this direction of Quasar, if I'm being sure. honest. Uh, I really kind of like the, like, alien of the week type of story of the previous one, and this now is not really doing it for me as much. Sure. Um, it would be... I don't know how they could fix that part. Like maybe in order to teach the new to, in, in order to, to teach epoch uh, about the universe, Quasar has to now go and deal with these things. And by doing so is teaching epoch and maybe like even learning himself. Right. Or, or something. But, yeah. but it just feels like um, this doesn't have any consequence to you anything else that's going on. I don't really care for this storyline of this mm. like woman trapping a bunch of men to see who is the most viable mate. Right. And it's like happening in two different ways in the same story with two different characters. Like it just feels off. I, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. Yeah. Well, yeah. And also, well, I mean, I guess at some point, you know, <laughs> You know, Mark Grunwald was also writing Captain America at the same time. At some point, he's going to run out of ideas, so he's probably just spinning his wheels for mm -hmm. a couple issues, right? He's like, oh, how can I kill two or three more issues? And this was it. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's just been a great plot. And maybe if it wasn't... It might be, like, an interesting storyline to go over for a little while, mm -hmm. but it seems to be dragging on a little bit longer. And then even before this... Like Moon Dragon introduces herself, introduces herself in this story even before uh, all of this started happening. As hey, I'm gonna be your mate. Like I'm gonna be, uh, we're gonna be together, Quasar. Like way back when he was uh, fighting Jack of Hearts, like the first time. Mm -hmm. So it's just strange. I don't know. I don't. I don't love it. Yeah, no, it's not great. No, yeah, I agree. Um, but thankfully, it's over next issue, so we don't have to worry about it for much longer, oh, right? Good. Yeah, it concludes next issue, so I think we're in safe hands. And I usually don't try to jump ahead, but I have read these issues before, and I looked ahead, and there's some really, there's a couple really cool okay, uh, issues coming, so I'm looking yeah, forward I'm to glad. it. Yeah. But on the next issue of Quasar Quinology, Qu Quinology, as we uh, mentioned earlier, we will be reviewing the crossovers, a couple crossovers that Quasar had with Thor and with Alpha Flight. So that Ooh. will be interesting. We haven't talked about qu uh, crossovers in a long <laughs> time. Yeah. Oh, so amazing. Be sure to join us for that episode. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, we also want to welcome our new, very. Uh, loyal devoted listener oh wait here i've got him right here who uh is also a feather a fellow critic of marshall's falchine his name is <laughs> mr spider 49er thank you for watching our show and um yeah keep commenting because we we find your uh you know your comments and feedback really interesting yeah so anyway yeah and and for anybody else listening you can find all of our stuff over on our website at the comic book syndicate.com uh all of our podcasts are video formats so you can actually see the pages of quasar as we're talking about them uh so go check us out on our youtube channel as well uh leave us a comment leave us a like let us know what you guys think about the comics and things that we're talking about uh i keep in touch so that's right next time. and until the next time see you later all right